Hey everyone, so on my Hackintosh installation video, I got a lot of comments asking how do I choose parts for a Hackintosh, and today we're going to do just that. Now, the biggest decision when it comes to building a Hackintosh is do you want to go for Intel or AMD? Do you want to go for the boys in blue, the tried and true, or do you want to go for the underdog, the challenger? Now, some people might say that AMD Hackintoshes are unreliable, they're unstable, and you have to give up a little bit of performance in order for them to actually work. And while that was true, the AMD Hackintosh community, or Ryzentosh, has really come a long way, and now the performance gap and instability issues aren't really so much issues anymore. So when deciding between Intel and AMD, the biggest thing to consider is, what am I using this Hackintosh for? If you're using a lot of applications that require single core performance over multi-core performance, so say you're editing with H.264 or H.265 files, or you want to use QuickSync in Premiere Pro, then Intel may be the better option. But if you're editing in pretty much any other codec besides H.264 or H.265, or you use applications that take advantage of multiple threads, then you're probably going to want to go with AMD. So if you're planning to do an Intel Hackintosh, keep watching this video. If you're planning to do an AMD Hackintosh, go to this timestamp and your video will begin there. Okay, Team Blue users, let's start building a parts list. When it comes to Intel, there are four different lineups apart from Intel's HEDT, which I will not be covering. There's i3, i5, i7, and i9. i3 is good for basic tasks and light web browsing. i5 is good for a light 1080p editing, photo editing, basic tasks. i7 is good for all of those things, but on much higher level, so say 1080p editing or 4K editing with lots of effects. And then i9 is top of the line. Maybe you're editing with 8K raw footage, or you have something that's very CPU dependent and you need the power of an i9. Generally, you'll want to spend around a fourth to a third of your budget on a CPU, and that can vary based on what you're actually using the Hackintosh for. So if you're using something that's a lot more CPU intensive, then you're going to want to spend more, so a third to maybe even beyond a third. And if you're doing something that's more GPU intensive, then you can spend to a fourth or possibly even less. If the CPU has an F at the end, that means there's no integrated graphics, so if you are planning to buy a dedicated GPU, this is a nice way to save some money. If there's a K at the end, that means it's overclockable, so if you don't plan on overclocking, you are going to have to pay a premium if you want to get a K chip. If there's an S at the end, that means it's pre-binned or it's been factory overclocked to a known speed and tested uh, stable. And that generally costs quite a bit more, so I wouldn't recommend buying any of those chips as it's just a small performance gain for a lot more cost. Okay, now let's select a motherboard. I wouldn't pay more than around $100 to $150 for a good motherboard. A quick motherboard guideline is if the motherboard starts with Z, that means it has higher quality VRMs, supports overclocking, and generally has higher quality parts. And if the motherboard starts with B or H, that means it's meant for business or home use respectively, and those generally have lesser quality parts. If you're planning to get an i3, an i5, or maybe even an i7 CPU, you'll want to go with a B or H series motherboard, and if you're going with an i7 or an i9, you're going to want to go with a Z series motherboard. Unfortunately, I can't give exact recommendations since parts are always changing, but I can give two pieces of advice. The first one is do a quick Google search to find if your CPU and your motherboard are compatible. Not all motherboards will be compatible with all CPUs. For example, a Z370 board might not work with a 9th gen Intel CPU unless the BIOS has been updated. The second piece of advice is to figure out if your motherboard is Hackintosh compatible. A lot are, but some aren't. So you'll have to do a quick Google search to see which motherboard is best for Hackintoshing. Now let's move on to RAM. If you have a system with an i3, I wouldn't recommend more than 8 gigabytes. If you have an i5 system, I wouldn't recommend more than 16 gigabytes. If you're running an i7, I would recommend about 16 to 32 gigabytes. And if you're running i9, you might need as little as 16 gigabytes or as much as 64 or even 128 gigabytes. So when buying RAM, a lot of listings will have one by whatever number or two by whatever number or four by whatever number to denote how many sticks of RAM there are. And two sticks is ideal. So you'll want two by eight gigabytes for 16 gigabytes of RAM, two by four gigabytes for eight gigabytes of RAM, two by 16 for 32 gigabytes of RAM, and so on. This is because dual channel RAM, which is two sticks of RAM, optimizes the performance on most motherboards, and it's often not that much more expensive than one stick of RAM. As for speeds, I would recommend 2400 to 2666 megahertz because Intel doesn't rely as much on RAM speed for CPU performance like Ryzen does. Now let's select a GPU. Here's where you'll have to decide between AMD and NVIDIA. The only reason you should go for an NVIDIA GPU is if you already have 
an NVIDIA GPU and you don't feel like upgrading or switching. The last supported version of macOS is High Sierra for NVIDIA GPUs, and if you're wondering about CUDA, well, Metal is actually a really good GPU-enhanced compute software that works on AMD GPUs. So the main GPUs that you'll want to look at are the RX 470, RX 480, RX 570, RX 580, RX 5700, RX 5700 XT, and the Radeon 7. You can find one that fits your price range, but going used can actually save you a fair bit of money, probably around $20 to $30 for the first four, and upwards of $40 to $50 for the last three. Since Apple uses AMD GPUs in their products, they are supported in every version of macOS, and a good rule of thumb is spend around a third of your budget on your GPU. If you're running an i3 Hackintosh, you'll most likely not want to get a dedicated GPU, and if you're running an i5, you shouldn't be getting a $600 or $700 GPU because you're probably going to bottleneck the GPU, and that's essentially wasted performance and money. Then you'll need to add a power supply, storage, and case. For the power supply, use the PSU tier list in the description below, and you should spend about $60 to $120 for a good quality power supply, $60 for the lower end systems, and maybe even $120 for high end systems. To find out how much wattage you need, all you have to do is do a quick Google search for how much power your CPU draws and how much power your GPU draws, add them up, and get a little bit more than the total. Most systems will be fine with a 550 or 650 watt power supply, and the brands are the models that I would recommend the most are the Corsair CX and CXM, which are good quality, but also relatively cheap. Next, you'll need some form of storage, and nowadays SSDs are really cheap, so any system without an SSD is going to feel a lot slower because things take longer to load. So I would recommend having an SSD for at least the boot drive. If you do need more bulk storage, you can also get additional hard drives. I would only recommend two terabyte and above because one terabyte hard drives just aren't worth it for today. And if you're running an i3 system, I would recommend about 120 to 240 gigabyte SSD. If you're running an i5 system, I would recommend 120 to a 480 gigabyte SSD. If you're running an i7, maybe more like 512 to one terabyte of SSD storage. And if you're running an i9, 512 to two terabytes of storage. One thing to keep in mind is that unless you know what you're doing, you should probably go for a SATA drive, 2.5 inch, because there are also a different type of SATA drive, which is the M.2 drive, which not all motherboards support. If you're going for an NVMe drive, you can completely ignore this. Link down below is a guide to SSDs so that you don't get a bad SSD like the Kingston A400, which is cheap, but also not good. The higher up on the list, the higher quality is going to be, but it's also going to cost more. Finally, let's talk about the case. This is where you can kind of choose anything, but make sure to look at online reviews first so that you know that you're not getting something that's not good. And if there's not many reviews in it, it's most likely garbage, so don't buy it. The last thing to mention is that if you need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, make sure you research things that are actually Hackintosh compatible because not all Wi-Fi cards and Bluetooth cards are compatible with macOS. Okay, Team Red, let's start building a parts list. For AMD's consumer CPUs, there are four different lineups, Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, and Ryzen 9. I will not be covering any Threadripper chips or 3950X and above, so for Ryzen 9, the only option that I'll be covering is the Ryzen 9 3900X. So a general rule of thumb is this. If you're doing basic web browsing and light tasks, a Ryzen 3 is good for that. If you're doing some web browsing, some photo editing, some 1080p and possibly 4K footage, a Ryzen 5 is good for that. If you're doing more professional video editing and other applications, a Ryzen 7 is good for that. And if you're doing top of the line stuff, say 8K raw footage, then a Ryzen 9 is good for that. However, you should check online benchmarks first to see if the application that you're going to be using can actually utilize all the cores of a Ryzen 9 versus the Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5. So generally the higher number, the better. So a Ryzen 5 3600 is going to perform better than a Ryzen 5 2600. And you'll generally want to spend around a fourth to a third of your budget on your CPU. And this can change based on what you're doing. So if you're doing something more CPU intensive, you can spend a third to maybe even a little more than that on your CPU. And if you're doing something that's more GPU based, you may want to spend less on your CPU so that you can spend more on your GPU. Now, anything with a G at the end means it has integrated graphics, but as of writing this, the support for those graphics aren't as big and you may have some issues, so I don't recommend buying it. Okay, now let's select a motherboard, and I wouldn't pay more than $100 to $150 for a motherboard. A quick motherboard guideline is that anything starting with an X 
means that it generally has higher quality VRMs, higher quality parts, and anything that starts with a B means that it's maybe a little lower quality. The X series chipset isn't exactly worth it because a lot of B series chipset motherboards are actually pretty high quality and can compete with some of the lower end X series chipset motherboards. If you're running a Ryzen 3, 5, or 7, a B series motherboard is good for that. And if you're running a Ryzen 9, a high quality B series motherboard is good for that, but the X series motherboards are also viable. Down below, I've linked a guide that lists AMD Ryzen motherboards and the power delivery quality. Unfortunately, I can't give exact recommendations, but here's something to keep in mind. You'll need to make sure that the motherboard actually supports the CPU that you're buying. For example, a B450 board might not work with Ryzen 3rd gen unless the BIOS has been updated or unless you have a Max port. So if you have something like the B450 Tomahawk Max, that means it'll support Ryzen 3rd gen chips. So anything with a Max will generally support the next version or the next series of CPUs. Now let's move on to RAM. If you're running a Ryzen 3 system, I would recommend no more than eight gigabytes. If you're running a Ryzen 5 system, I would recommend about 16 gigabytes. If you're running a Ryzen 7 system, I would recommend 16 to 32 gigabytes. And if you're running a Ryzen 9, you may need as little as 16 gigabytes or as much as 64 or even 128 gigabytes of RAM. So when buying RAM, a lot of listings will have one by whatever number or two by whatever number or four by whatever number to denote how many sticks of RAM there are. And two sticks is ideal. So you'll want two by eight gigabytes for 16 gigabytes of RAM, two by four gigabytes for eight gigabytes of RAM, two by 16 for 32 gigabytes of RAM and so on. As for speed, I would recommend 3000 or 3200 megahertz since Ryzen CPU performance can depend more on the RAM speed than Intel chips and 3000 and 3200 megahertz aren't often that much more expensive than 2666 megahertz kits. Now let's select a GPU. Here's where you'll have to decide between AMD and Nvidia. The only reason you should go for an Nvidia GPU is if you already have an Nvidia GPU and you don't feel like upgrading or switching. The last supported version of macOS is High Sierra for Nvidia GPUs and if you're wondering about CUDA, well, Metal is actually a really good GPU enhanced compute software that works on AMD GPUs. So the main GPUs that you'll want to look at are the RX 470, RX 480, RX 570, RX 580, RX 5700, RX 5700 XT, and the Radeon 7. You can find one that fits your price range, but going used can actually save you a fair bit of money, probably around $20 to $30 for the first four, and upwards of $40 to $50 for the last three. Since Apple uses AMD GPUs in their products, they are supported in every version of macOS, and a good rule of thumb is spend around a third of your budget on your GPU. Or make sure it's not being bottlenecked by your CPU. For example, if you have a Ryzen 3, don't get a $600 or $700 GPU because that's essentially wasted performance and money because of bottlenecking. Then you'll need to add a power supply, storage, and case. For the power supply, use the PSU tier list in the description below, and you should spend about $60 to $120 for a good quality power supply, $60 for the lower end systems, and maybe even $120 for high end systems. To find out how much wattage you need, all you have to do is do a quick Google search for how much power your CPU draws and how much power your GPU draws, add them up and get a little bit more than the total. Most systems will be fine with a 550 or 650 watt power supply, and the brands are the models that I would recommend the most are the Corsair CX and CXM, which are good quality, but also relatively cheap. Next, you'll need some form of storage, and nowadays SSDs are really cheap, so any system without an SSD is going to feel a lot slower because things take longer to load. So I would recommend having an SSD for at least the boot drive. I generally recommend 120 to 240 gigabytes of SSD storage for a Ryzen 3 system, 120 to 480 for Ryzen 5 systems, 480 to one terabyte of storage for a Ryzen 7, and 512 gigabytes to two terabytes of storage for a Ryzen 9. One thing to keep in mind is that unless you know what you're doing, you should probably go for a SATA drive, 2.5 inch, because there are also a different type of SATA drive, which is the M.2 drive, which not all motherboards support. If you're going for an NVMe drive, you can completely ignore this. Link down below is a guide to SSDs so that you don't get a bad SSD like the Kingston A400, which is cheap, but also not good. The higher up on the list, the higher quality is going to be, but it's also going to cost more. Finally, let's talk about the case. This is where you can kind of choose anything, but make sure to look at online reviews first so that you know that you're not getting something that's not good. And if there's not many reviews in it, it's most likely garbage, so don't buy it. The last thing to mention is that if you do need a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth card, make sure it's compatible with macOS because not all cards are compatible. All right, thanks for watching this video. Thumbs up if you liked it, down if you didn't, and subscribe for more.